Okay, welcome to this tutorial where we'll be installing free radius onto the same virtual machine uh, where it previously installed um, Fusion Directory. Okay, so let's get it going. Okay, and so now to find the commands that I'll be using, if you go to the um, to the Mac PC Zone website, and then just go to Articles, and they already have an article for installing Free Radius, so, and then to connect it up to Fusion Directory. So first, to make things easier, what we do is just log into the actual machine itself. So first you need to get the IP address. And then once you know what that is, you can then SSH into it. Okay, so now once we're in, first thing to do is to install the free radius um, service along with its utilities. Okay, and so what that will do is that will copy those um, the binaries in and also some configuration files. So the next thing we do is first configuration file that we edit is in etc raddb modules ldap. So basically you can go into the terminal and just edit that with whichever editor you want to use, and I, I just use Nano for that. And basically the section that you edit is just, just near the beginning. And the easiest thing to do is, is just to remove these four lines. And then basically just copy them from the the page. Because you only want the lines with the plus behind it. And so then you just re you have to just remove the pluses. And then finally the also have to change the where is it? Because basically there's an attribute right, that's the access attribute <coughs> and that's actually used to it's what the radius server checks for in the LDAP directory on the user account to check um, if the user can actually log in. And you'll, you'll see why that comes in handy later. Okay, and once that's edited, then you just save that file. And the next file that's edited is, it's in this, etc 
rdbclient.conf. Basically, this configuration file is just for the the clients that access it, which would could either be a router or another machine. Looks like I spelled it wrong. Okay. Have to make sure to change that. Okay, yeah. So if you're going to and basically you only have to change the one relating to the to your local network. So basically whatever the IP address is of your network, it's easiest just to change this first. Uh, client entry and admittedly I've haven't set it too secure because this is just really for test purposes so just make sure that client entry is matches whatever your your local network is so obviously this entry is from for the network that I'm using okay so once that's in let me save that And the final file we have to edit is is in etc red db sites available default. And basically, this file all you're doing is changing it so that it actually uses LDAP for the. Uh, as one of the methods to authenticate. Okay, so there's just one, I'll comment this line here, and then there's just one other line. We uncomment the auth type is a little bit further down. That's inside authentication. All right, so you just remove these three stars in front of the auth type LDAP. Sorry, hashes, I mean. So then save that file. And so now the Radius server should be ready. And so what you can do is if you run this uh, command, it should start the server, server. And if it says at the bottom ready to process request, then that means your typing or your editing has been okay. And so if you just check further up, just to make sure that there's a section in there that, yeah, where it says all the LDAP lines come in so as long as you see that and at the top you can see the name of your of your server and of course your password exposed as well and your user and so then you know that the LDAP is running inside the radio server so now you can just press control C to quit that and so now you're just ready to start it as a service and then so if you go into NT sysv you can then select the the Radius DE service so that it starts when your server boots up and then you can also start the service now as well and then you should get the green OK and so then that means it's running so now all we have to do is just basically test that it works um, and the easiest way to do that is to test it from, uh, oh, actually, yeah, I forgot. Now, first thing to do, because of course, yeah, we wouldn't be able to test yet. 
until we actually install the extra plugins for um, free radius because of course even if we try to test it now it wouldn't actually work because the the appropriate um, uh, schema isn't actually in there for the free radius so of course the good thing is fusion directory actually comes with its own plugin that actually has a schema as well so it basically it does it all for you you don't have to worry about typing out a schema or trying to search for it and even more conveniently the fusion directory will actually insert the schema for you as well so you don't have to bother with ldif files and trying to uh, actually insert them manually yourself okay so that looks okay and so now finally we are ready but we still can't test yet because now we have to go into Fusion Directory itself and actually add the proper attribute for the um, that user. So we just log into it like in the previous tutorial after you set it up. And when you go into Users, we still have the uh, sort of Joe Blogs user. Now, if if we go in there, you'll notice that along the top it has these grayed out tabs, and these are extra um, attributes you can add to your LDAP users. So notice here now we have this free radius one which wasn't there before. So we can click on that, and just to show the difference it makes, if we go and actually try to to test the user using the rad test utility from the command line then when we try to run the test it actually comes back with access rejected so of course it's tried to see if the user was in the local LDAP directory and of course they even though they're there the attributes aren't right so if we go back in and then add the free radius settings. So now they have the um, certain free radius um, attributes added into their user, user um, profile once you click on apply. And so now that's in. If we try again, oh, let's do it. Oh, yeah, I think I know why. Because uh, what happened is I changed the password. So I just need to... Yeah, no, actually, I've given them a different password before. Let's remember that. So we try again. And success. So you see where it says there access accept packet. Then once you see that accept, then now you know the connection works. And so the next thing is to just make sure that it actually works uh, from a remote machine as well, because that's the important one. Because we'll be using later on, we'll be using remote devices to try and connect. So this is from my local machine connecting across the internal network into the virtual machine and so if we try to log in from here then we get success again so they we can see it's working across the network and internally on the server and just to be sure that this really is the um is because of the attributes in the LDAP why the the connection is working if you go into the free radius and then actually remove the settings so what that will do is remove the attributes from the user. And now if you try and log in as that particular user, then we get access rejected. And so that's on the remote machine. And then same problem on, on, the, lo on the local machine as well. So that means if you have a user who's left, but you want to keep their account in, all you have to do is turn off the actual 
specific attributes for free radius and that's it they can't log into your vpn or wherever you wherever you have them connect anymore and then i don't know maybe if they come back and decide they want to work with you again you without having to delete the account you can just add the attributes back and then they can log in again to access accept And so they're back in. So it's as easy as that. And that's one of the reasons I like Fusion Directory is the way it's so easy to change attributes on the users. So you can have sets of users who can log into this resource and others you can log into some other resource and you can remove their permission whenever you want. Okay, so that's that for this part of the um, tutorial. So I'll be continuing on with some other features I'm going to be adding to this virtual machine. But for now... That's the end of this particular tutorial. So if you want to be notified of any others that I do, then just subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye.